Hello everybody, this is Dave Berkus for Insights from Berkonomics. This week we're going to talk about establishing and paying a board of directors. An important subject, especially if you are considering going onto a board for an early stage company, or if you're already on such a board. So let's talk about that. What are the payoffs of the company, or for the company? First of all, it keeps the CEO and senior management focused on strategic issues rather than tactical issues. It adds value because people with experience usually on the board can help the CEO dramatically. Better work gets done by those people within the company because of the advice and help from the board. And the better board is a result of a better company. Sounds like a circular argument to me. And a better company is obviously the goal of a board member. There are legal responsibilities of the board, which many people don't know, and I think it's important for us to cover. First of all, there are two duties, the duty of loyalty and the duty of care. The duty of loyalty is to the corporation itself, rather than to the people that elected you onto the board. And the duty of care is for the asset, which is the corporation, rather than having to care for yourself or for the people who brought you onto the board or for the money that was put into the company. Duty of care is to the corporation itself. Under that duty of care, there are some subsidiary duties, which people have talked about in the past. The duty of acting in good faith, the duty of candor in your discussions as opposed to reserving yourself and not making statements sometimes when you know things that should be valuable for the company itself. There are two committees in larger boards, not typical in very small boards for early stage companies, but they are the Audit Committee and the Compensation Committee. We'll cover their duties in a more detailed event later on. But the ultimate reminder is one that I often teach in my half-day seminars on board and board duties, and that is Noses in, fingers out. Never ever as a board member reach beyond the CEO to talk to and gain information from and instruct anybody the CEO has as a direct report or anybody else. It will make the CEO unable to perform the CEO's duties. Is that important? Noses in, fingers out. So how do you pay an early stage board? First of all, cash is nice, but uh, it is not typical for an early stage board for some very obvious reasons. So stock grants create taxable events and typically are not used for the very same reason. You don't want to pay tax on stock, which may or may not be valuable over time. So therefore, stock options are the typical way in which we pay boards of directors. And usually it is 1% of the fully diluted equity over two to sometimes as many as four years, typically two years. And these are non-qualified options. That means there are tax impacts, usually as the cost of those options, once exercised, generate ordinary income rather than capital gains. So there are some things to talk about with your tax attorney, but they are typically granted as NSOs because you're not an employee of the corporation when you're on the board. How much time do you spend as a board member? Well, typically you spend one meeting a month for early stage companies before the break-even point, sometimes long after, but usually at the break-even point you consider going once every other month. I've been on a few boards where it's once every quarter. And sometimes you have to know that the board members get paid if there is no equity available to them in a closely held corporation in cash. And that cash typically is $1,000 a meeting. I've had boards paying a lot more than that. But these are early stage boards we're talking about now. If you're the chairman of a board, you often will spend more time as the CEO coach, and therefore you deserve to have more money. Typically it's another half a percent, meaning one and one half percent in the form of your option. Consulting fees are okay if you spend more days of service than a day a month in the typical telephone calls. But be sure if you are going to charge consulting fees to the company that the CEO is aware and the rest of the board members are informed that you are charging for whatever services you provide. Otherwise, those services could be considered compensation beyond what you'd be expecting to get and compensation that would anger or make other board members unhappy. Well, that's it. A very, very short set of lessons for how to be and how to be paid as a board member for small companies. Well, you know, there are 370 or more of these kinds of insights from the books, 
14 of which I've written, here are three of which on the screen, all available on Amazon and other booksellers. I'd also like you to sign up at berkus.com, B-E-R-K-U-S, or berkonomics.com for my weekly emails to get some of these 370 and even more insights from Berkonomics. This is Dave Berkus. Thanks for staying with me. See you next time.